Coming up on this week's edition of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. Hear one Nevada rancher's warning to Congress about the possible consequences of regulating groundwater. Plus, we'll explain why grassroots membership from every cattle producing state is critical to NCBA's efforts in Washington, D.C. Now, from the Denver headquarters of the National Cattlemen's Beef Association, it's NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. Hello and welcome to NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. I'm Kevin Auctioner. The Clean Water Act is making news once again, as some recent federal court decisions have the possibility of undermining the way many states regulate groundwater. In April, Nevada rancher Joe Guild testified in front of members of the U.S. Senate Committee on Environment and Public Works as part of an information gathering session. Guild warned that federal regulation of groundwater under the Clean Water Act would hurt American cattle producers. One of the most complex environmental issues facing our country in recent history has been the EPA's attempted definition of waters of the United States. NCBA works hard to ensure that the definition of WOTUS is not expanded to include water Congress never intended to regulate. However, if EPA finds authority to regulate discharges via groundwater, any progress made on this front will be lost. The regulation of groundwater has the potential to ne negatively impact even more cattle operations than the damaging uh, 2015 WOTUS rule. Under the misguided theory, everyday activities, including farming, ranching, or having a septic tank in your backyard, could require a federal discharge permit. Making matters worse, the additional permitting would come with significant added costs, but no additional environmental benefit. We'll be sure to keep you updated as this issue develops in Washington, D.C. Why not join NCBA in the fight for regulations and policies that will make a difference for cattle producing families? It's easy to do. Just call 1-866-233-3872 or you can visit the website ncba.org. NCBA is the cattle industry's oldest and largest national organization, in large part because it remains a grassroots-run association where members come together to set policy positions. Cattleman to Cattleman reporter Russell Nemitz has more on why this process of policy development from the state and county level on up is critical to the long-term success of our industry. With us now is the NCBA's Senior Vice President of Policy based in the NCBA Washington DC office, Colin Woodall. And Colin, it's always a great time of the year to catch up with you folks in the DC office. Talk about legislative priorities for the US beef cattle industry with the US Capitol in the backdrop. I mean, grassroots policy starts in the country with the state affiliates, it works its way here, and then your team takes it and runs with it. I think the one thing that gives NCBA our greatest strength in Washington, D.C. is the fact that we are truly a grassroots organization. The issues that we work on here in Washington, D.C. and our policy on those issues is not put together by me or my staff. It's put together by NCBA's members. A lot of time, it's an idea that originates at a county cattlemen's meeting and works its way up through the entire process. I think one of the greatest examples that we have seen recently is the issue of fake meat. This is something that the industry has seen as an issue for quite some time. They have seen it brewing. We didn't want to be in a situation like our friends in the milk industry found themselves where by the time uh, the product started coming to market, it was really too late to address their use of the term milk. We're trying to get ahead of that, especially with the lab cultured product. So as a result of that, we had several states, including Illinois, uh, Iowa, Kansas, Colorado, that all came together and said NCBA needs policy on this and they worked it through their states, brought it to our annual convention in Phoenix and we, we were able to debate it, we were able to talk about it and as such we now have policy that allows us to come up and go to Capitol Hill and work on this very issue. You know, as you talk about an issue like fake meat, Colin, I mean, those members that bring policy to this national level where it gets to this sort of stage, if you will, they take great pride in having that ownership, knowing that it's going to do something really good for the entire U.S. beef cattle industry. 
Well, they do take a lot of ownership in it as they should because, again, this is truly a concern that's recognized by our members at all levels. And what's even more important is that with our process, it goes to a committee of their peers from across the country who are also cattle producers, and it gives them an opportunity to talk about this issue, to debate the pros and cons of where NCBA should be in our position, and then ultimately allows them to take a vote based on all the facts available at the time. Once that's done, then there is another opportunity for our board of directors to debate this issue, to talk about it, and ultimately pass it. And probably the one thing that we're most proud of is that it then goes out to every member of NCBA through a mail-in ballot, and every member has an opportunity to weigh in. And then only after that does it become the policy of the National Cattlemen's Beef Association. And just like any good piece of policy that's worked on, whether it's at the state level and in individual state capitals or here in our nation's capital in Washington, D.C., I mean, these policies don't go anywhere, even when they become law or the fact of life, so to speak. I mean, they're always going to be having to be mended and worked on, kind of like a good fence back on the ranch. Oh, that's exactly right. And I think all you have to do is look at our own history as an organization. When you look back at that first meeting in Denver well over 100 years ago, they were talking about a lot of the same issues that we still have today. And I think that's something we're going to continue to see, whether it is tax policy, trade policy, any sort of interaction by the government into our industry, we are going to have to engage. And sometimes you get some tremendous wins, much like we received with the CERCLA decision on air reporting just a couple of weeks ago. But at the same time, that's not always going to stand. We're probably going to have to fight that again sometime in the future. But at the same time, if we ever have a significant defeat, defeat it also gives us an opportunity sometime in the future to go back in and try to fix that. So that's why we here in Washington, D.C. have to stay up on the hill all the time with these agencies, making sure we always know what the dynamic is at play and how we can take advantage of it for our policy. And whether it be here at the NCBA's Washington, D.C. office or the or the Denver office, I wanted to mention. I mean, you guys want to hear from members from across this country anytime they want to pick up the phone or shoot an email or even text. Absolutely. We want to hear directly from our membership. We work for our members. So we definitely want to know what's on their mind. And a lot of times they bring up issues that we hadn't even thought about. And it prompts a whole other discussion about where NCBA should be at. Well, as always, we appreciate you taking a little bit of time, Colin, and joining us on Cattlemen to Cattlemen for the very latest from Washington, D.C. Thank you, Russell. Again, we've been visiting with the NCBA's Senior Vice President of Policy, Colin Woodall. With that, we'll go ahead and send it back to you. Would you like a chance to be part of the policymaking process? Then make plans to attend the Cattle Industry Summer Business Meeting. This is where producers come together to discuss current issues, work on programs and initiatives, and set the policy priorities for the upcoming year. This year's meeting is set for August 1st through the 4th in Denver, Colorado. Visit ncba.org for details on how you can attend. Still ahead on NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen, we'll discuss the Beef Quality Assurance Program and how you can get certified today. Plus. We'll tell you how you can get hands-on cattle care training at stockmanship and stewardship events all across the country. Stay with us. We'll be right back. When you're in the cattle business, no matter how much it's a business, it still starts with cattle. It's this basic notion that sits at the core of how we approach things at Beringer Engelheim. We understand when you put the cattle first, it just naturally leads to doing the right things. If you want to do well in this business, you start by doing right. Take care of the cattle, and they'll take care of you. Saddle up and make your way to Denver, Colorado for the 2018 Cattle Industry Summer Business Meeting. This is your chance to stay up to date on beef industry trends and policies, meet with industry leadership and your fellow cattlemen and women. Plus, you'll get insights on hot topics at the issues forums. Mark your calendar for the 2018 Cattle Industry Summer Business Meeting, August 1st to the 4th in Denver. Find out more at ncba.org. Welcome back. 
Cattle producers continue to rely on the Beef Quality Assurance Program for the best in cattle care. In fact, more than 20,000 people have gone online to obtain BQA certification since the training modules were relaunched just last year. We asked cattlemen and women from all around the country to share their thoughts on the benefits of the BQA program. Well, if you take care of the cows, take care of the cattle, they'll take care of us, right? So uh, beef quality assurance programs in place, making sure the cattle are handled properly, making sure they're always healthy, comfortable. We say happy cows are more profitable cows. So beef quality insurance has been a huge part of uh, helping our bottom line. I believe in the beef quality assurance program because it makes sense. The principles are good for everybody to follow and there's success behind the program. We have followed the program and we've been able to bring our cow herd to a healthier state, uh, more consistent state and a product that we can be proud of behind it. And I think the beef quality assurance is the foundation to all that. You know, the whole beef quality assurance thing to me is not just about us. It's about uh, animal care and taking care of the animal. And as it says, beef quality assurance. Well, the consumer is looking for some kind of assurance with all of the, the information out there that's not so much correct some of the time. Um, this gives the consumer some definition of what they're getting is, they're being assured that what they're getting is a quality product. Joining us now to discuss the BQA program is Chase DeCoit, NCBA's Director of Beef Quality Assurance. Chase, why do you think the BQA program continues to draw so many producers? Yeah, thanks for having me, Kevin. Well, first of all, I think it's the widespread industry support. Everybody from our industry partners to cattlemen with uh, a small herd are participating in BQA. Um, and that uptake is really what spurs and drives others uh, to participate in the program. Um, producers are seeing tangible benefits by being a part of BQA, and we're seeing this uh, program continue to grow. You know, just last month, uh, we surpassed over 20,000 BQA certifications wow. through the online platform in just one year's time. So we're really excited um, by the momentum of the program, mm -hmm. and that doesn't even count all of the great hard work of our BQA state coordinators across the country who are certifying and training thousands upon thousands of producers. Yeah. You know, as we talk about everything from antibiotics to animal handling and, and other animal welfare issues, they change constantly. How do you make sure that participants are getting the most updated tools and techniques to manage their cattle? Yeah, so we look at the BQA program uh, consistently to make sure that it's up to date with the most recent research and most applicable animal husbandry practices. And so the program is constantly evolving um, and taking in those new practices into the program. When we relaunched um, our new online training um, last year in 2017, we completely updated that with the most recent information that we had. And so that training um, is always new and fresh. And so because the certification is only good for three years, every time somebody gets retrained in BQA, mm -hmm they're receiving the most up-to-date information. Beyond that, um, we encourage folks to follow us on our social media platforms, National Beef Quality Assurance on Facebook, mm -hmm. National BQA on, on Twitter, um, and through our YouTube channel to remain engaged and know um, the newest, latest, greatest practices uh, in BQA and in raising your cattle. Tell our viewers why you believe BQA certification is so critically important to consumer confidence in beef. Yeah, you know, I just read a, a really enlightening report um, a couple of weeks ago, and in that report, it named animal welfare as the top concerns for Americans today. That beats out um, childhood uh, hunger and education. So this is a top of mind concern, and BQA addresses that concern um, like no other program. And so this is vitally important that uh, beef producers, our industry, um, shares the story that they're raising cattle in a responsible way, and BQA um, is that way. You know, another way you're educating producers is through the stockmanship and stewardship clinics. My son and I attended the one at Fort Collins last year and had a fantastic time. 
Uh, tell folks a little bit about the feedback you're getting about those. Yeah, we're, we're gearing up for a great lineup of events in 2018, hitting another uh, five regions with a quality program uh, for producers to attend. But what you just mentioned is the feedback that we're getting. Folks were excited and energized by last year's events. They're live, they're hands-on, they're exciting, um, and people are really enjoying the education that they're getting out of those events. So the feedback has been overwhelmingly positive about these, those events. We thank Beringer Ingelheim for their support um, again this year, and we're headed in to another great uh, set of events this year. You bet. They're very, very well attended and very educational informational. I mean, regardless of uh, whether you've been at this uh, six months or 60 years, I think there's something that everyone can learn. Would you agree? Certainly. You know, all of the methods and the education that we're teaching are highly applicable. Um, they're common sense practices that, that people really see working on their operation. And, yeah. and I think that that's why the program continues to gain steam. Thank you for all your leadership, Chase. Certainly. Thank you, Kevin. Now remember, to learn more about the Beef Quality Assurance Program, including information on how you can get certified at no cost, visit the website bqa.org. Still to come on Cattlemen to Cattlemen, we'll share some great stockmanship and stewardship tips from cattle handling expert Ron Gill. Don't go away. We'll have more right after this. Sure, cattle bring in the profits, but Case IH equipment helps you do everything else. If you're connected with the beef cattle business, then you should like the NCBA page on Facebook. The NCBA Facebook page shares photos, news, and valuable information about the beef cattle industry. You can also follow the NCBA Twitter feed at BeefUSA. So stay in touch with NCBA on Facebook and Twitter. Sure, cattle bring in the profits, but Case IH equipment helps you do everything else. As we told you earlier, NCBA offers hands-on stockmanship and stewardship training sessions that teach valuable cattle handling techniques that can help improve your bottom line. Russell Nemitz caught up with stockmanship expert Dr. Ron Gill to get his take on this important topic. Well, each year here at the Cattle Industry Convention, one of the highlights is the National Cattlemen's Beef Association's huge trade show. Of course, it's a great way to get your hands on the latest and greatest in farm and ranch technology and all those research and new products that are headed down the pike, so to speak, and headed to a cattle operation maybe one just like yours here soon. But part of the NCBA's trade show is also hands-on. It's a great opportunity to get to know and learn how to handle your livestock a little bit more efficiently. And it's always fun to catch up with guys like Ron Gill because you guys are down here part of the stockmanship and stewardship part of the NCBA trade show. We have live demonstrations. Talk about what we're doing down here. Well, we're trying to take this opportunity to expose people to a little bit about what we're doing around the country in the stockmanship and stewardship program, but also uh, have enough time here, which is unique to uh, some of these trade shows, to have an area like this to work in, but demonstrate some of the better principles of handling cattle and, and trying to reduce the stress on the cattle and the people that are working them. How's the feedback been with uh, people you've been visiting with after some of these demonstrations? Because it is pretty cool to see you guys actually working live animals here inside a trade show. Well, the feedback's always been very positive. I don't think I've ever heard one negative comment, but they may not chase us down if they got a bad <laughs> word to say. But uh, most of the time, it'll set people up to want to come to a different event or more trainings or something like that. So it's really planting a seed. We don't have enough time to go in real in-depth in a lot of things here. But it, it brings up our stockmanship and stewardship uh, series of programs we have across the nation. And it just gives people an idea of what all NCBA is doing and the, the depth of BQA and, and what What's going on in the organization? Do you think more livestock producers are starting to embrace what the BQA stands for and what's behind it and this, this uh, idea about using low stress management uh, practices back home? Yes, it's still somewhat uh, interesting to see what people think that means sometimes. 
but it, there's the conversation around this is much greater than it used to be. It used to be never talked about stockmanship, uh, but now it's nearly every magazine that comes out, it's got something on it, every webcast or whatever it might be has something on livestock handling. Yeah. So at least it's brought it to the forefront and we can then start fine tuning what we're talking about in handling livestock. So that's been the greatest thing over the last 10 years that we've actually changed the conversation within the industry. Well, I know we're doing this program in Phoenix as part of the 2018 Cattle Industry Convention in CBA Trade Show, but I also understand you're taking the stockmanship and stewardship program on the road, so to speak, this year. Yes, we are. And the Beringer Ingelheim coming on board to really help sponsor these and go around the stockmanship and stewardship regional programs that we do. Uh, they've been a great deal. We did five over six of them last year, and we've got about the same number planned this year. Uh, great thing, anybody that wants us to come can put in a proposal to get us there, and so it's, it's open. If you see something you like here, then realize that NCBA is open to, to having you try to get us to come and do a regional event. They've been really good because we have two days there to work with people and we really get more in depth into it. We engage more with the people uh, that are there and we can make a little bigger impact. You know, I know we can't cover everything in this program, but I mean, what are some, some quick little tips for folks at home when it comes to handling, you know, livestock, more specifically, maybe cattle of all ages? Well, the main thing is learn how to work with them and not try to make them do what we want to do, uh, but rather get them to do what we need them to do. And so trying to understand that cow behavior a little bit better and just, and the other thing is admit maybe we don't know everything, <laughs> and uh, which is kind of tough on some of us. And, but always try to learn how to get better at it. And those that do have that mindset, get better at it. Yeah, that's a tough one, admitting that we may not know everything. Well, if you can't do it for yourself, I guarantee it, your significant other will do it for you too. <laughs> <laughs> well, they'll point it out anyway. That's right. All right, well, Ron, we appreciate you joining us on NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. Appreciate the opportunity. You can find Ron Gill on the road this summer and fall at regional stockmanship and stewardship events all across the country. The training sessions provide hands-on learning in the area of beef quality assurance and low-stress cattle handling. Just visit stockmanshipandstewardship.org for details on when and where you can find an event in your region. Another way to sustain the beef industry is through ongoing research that ensures producers always have access to cutting-edge tools and technology. This research can cover many different disciplines, but all have the same goal, helping operations become more productive and profitable. Cattleman to Cattleman reporter Brad Bulla has a look at a research facility that has been an asset to Florida's cattle producers throughout the years. Established in 1941, the Range Cattle Research and Education Center is the only university-owned subtropical center of its kind in the United States. Their focus is on the enhancement of livestock, forages, and the natural resources of Florida's grasslands. The center is one of 12 research centers as part of the University of Florida throughout the state of Florida. Each of those 12 focus on a significant agricultural commodity. This center has its sole customer, as I call their customers, as the owners and managers of Florida's grazing lands. And we exist to conduct research and education programs to help uh, address problems that are impacting those individuals. With almost 3,000 acres of native and improved pastures, it's the largest in area of the University of Florida's research and education centers. It also boasts a large number of animals which is a benefit for its many research and extension programs. We run about 700 mama cows on this center with associated replacement heifers and bulls. The center is made up of both improved pastures and native woods pasture, and we utilize both of those here. We work primarily on uh, different subtropical warm season forages that our producers grow and use, as well as the common breeds that you see here, which is primarily a uh, Indicus Taurus cross, Brahmin Hereford, Brahmin Angus. The Range Cattle Research and Education Center works to improve the profitability of beef producers in Central and South Florida. It's known around the state as the Cattlemen's Research Center, thanks to decades of close work with the state's beef producers. We're only relevant due to our commitment to scholarship. And so we research these very applied, important problems, but then we move them through the peer assessment 
an end to the peer-reviewed literature for publication. And that way our producers know that it's not just our opinion, but rather it is a, uh, it, it's went through the rigor of peer assessment and they can utilize that with some level of certainty. Florida is a huge beef producing state, something that most people don't realize. The Range Cattle Research and Education Center hopes that its work will help spread the word about the importance and value of raising cattle in the state. Florida is a big agricultural state, but we don't have many people that understand that. And so a lot of our agricultural leaders and a lot of the commodity group organizations are really asking the University of Florida to help them uh, uh, send that message on. Be a partner with them to explain that the owners and managers of Florida's farms and ranches are really those environmental stewards. They're the first people on the ground that provide that type of uh, environmental stewardship to the growing urban communities that are all around them. Reporting from Florida, I'm Brad Bullifor, NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. Still to come on Cattlemen to Cattlemen, we'll take a trip to Arkansas to see how one operation relies on New Holland equipment to make better hay. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Say goodbye to your toughest pasture and rangeland weeds for good. Because one product offers season-long control handles the widest spectrum of broadleaf weeds, and clears the way for increased forage with greater grazing flexibility. So you get more beef per acre at a cost that can't be beat. It's Grazon Next HL Herbicide, and if it's in your pastures, plain and simple, weeds won't be. Are you concerned about the impact government policies could have on your cattle business? One way to make your voice heard in Washington is by joining NCBA. When you join, you'll have access to key policy updates and insights from Beltway Beef. It's the best way to hear directly from NCBA's DC team. Beltway Beef provides valuable policy information and it's free for NCBA members. Stay in touch with Beltway Beef. Join now at ncba.org. You're watching NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen, your source for cattle industry information and education on RFD-TV. Welcome back. It's a basic fact. If you raise cattle, you need feed and forage. For many cattlemen and women, that means they make hay each year. One essential to a good hay crop is the ability to get it put up in a timely way, and that takes reliable hay tools and farm machinery. Cattlemen to Cattlemen reporter Brian Baxter takes us to Arkansas to see how one cattleman is working all the angles to put up the most hay he can. For Marcus Creasy, who works the land in northeast Arkansas, his family business is all about raising high-quality beef cattle. We run a cow-calf operation, a commercial cow-calf operation, use black Angus bulls over the top of the cows. Uh, when fully stocked, we would be around 400 head at both locations, but we're not there today. We run a haying operation as well, feeding the cattle. Typically, we'll use just round bales and hay rings during the, during the winter, but we also do some grinding and mixing of feed as well and spread that out for the cattle in the wintertime. Summertime is typical grazing. Uh, we've got enough acres here that we can just graze cattle. When it comes to making hay for his cattle, weather is the critical factor. As with all producers, Marcus is focused on getting his hay crop cut, baled, and stored quickly. In those four by five round bales, we generally field stack those. We've got a good uh, solid base here where we can accommodate several hundred bales here and then another barn back at a location and then the, our second location hay there as well. So we'll haul back and forth between them. We utilize a 70-60 uh, New Holland baler for the typical bales. And uh, we've been trying out the roll belt 460 as well and it's been a great baler. As important as his round baler is, Marcus also relies on New Holland tractors to get the job done. We've got a, a T4 uh, New Holland that we utilize most of the time in our equipment regimen, but here lately we've been using the T6 you see back there. and It's been a great tractor to be able to utilize in the baling and the loading out of hay. 
Cattlemen appreciate the T6 for its power, its comfort of operation, and ease of use, if you will. When you look at the T6 series tractors that can be equipped with cab suspension, providing a comfortable ride and operation throughout the field, no matter of the field conditions. The powerful engines be, or provide the power that's needed for a variety of tasks, whether it is mowing or baling hay or moving bales. They have that power to be able to operate in. In fact, the T6 tractor has a variety of transmission choices and innovative features that were designed to meet the needs of producers like Marcus who are cutting, baling, and moving hay. New Holland is, is so innovative with, with um, new technology and new features. And we have this new T6 tractor with a dynamic command transmission. It's 24 speeds. I promise you it has more than one of the right speed you need to do that job. The T6 dynamic command was based on customer feedback. Customers were looking for more productivity and a better selection and alignment of gears and ground speeds within those certain applications. So looking at the transmission to be able to have that developed that it has more gears in less ranges, meaning more uh, ease of shifting up and down to be able to match those conditions. Oh, I can't brag enough about that. Whenever we're driving across the fields, the ability to be able to shuttle shift real quick with switching gear, switching ranges, and be able to get up to speed with how fast we want to try to get those bales put out, especially on a day like today when we may be getting just a little bit of rain coming in, we're able to really push the tractor and get those bales rolled out and get them in and off the field. In addition to the variety of transmission options in the T6 series tractors, operator comfort was also a major factor in the design. The best thing about a T6 tractor is, is it's the size of its cab. It is very comfortable, yet it's not big and bulky and, and cumbersome feeling. Suspended cab, for instance, so great when you're hitting rough ground. Very comfortable. The, the way the layout of the controls, everything is right here. It's your arm's reach, real easy to operate and very comfortable. In the course of a day when you're out there all day long, I mentioned all those things about comfort. Some folks think it may be a luxury, but when that's your livelihood and you're in it for 10 hours a day, you go home at night, you're not exhausted because you have had some comfort during the day. The T6 was designed with the front end loader use in mind when it comes to the visibility in the cab, providing excellent visibility to a front end loader and having that integrated into the controls in the cab of the tractor. The electronic joystick is molded right on the sidewinder armrest to be able to provide the operation and comfort uh, for ease of operation for the operator. The T6 has, a, has an enormous cab on it, number one, but for the size, it works great. Uh, a lot of visibility from, from the pull panel for your easy access to be able to see your loads up high to the window usage all the way around. You're able to see where you're at, see your equipment move. The placement of the, the controls, not only for the loader, but for the shift command, it's outstanding. Beyond the quality of the tractor for Marcus, there was another incentive to go blue, a New Holland discount thanks to his membership in the National Cattlemen's Beef Association. He walked in the door and because of our relationship with the Cattlemen Association uh, and NCBA, he took advantage of discounts. He saw the benefit in the discounts that New Holland had worked a deal with NCBA to, to give a discount on tractors and balers and mowers and whatever, and, and he took advantage of that. That NCBA process was great. When I initially went into Venture to, to purchase that first uh, tractor with the benefit, the guys there were real easy to work with. They knew exactly what we were talking about. That promotion worked great, and I can't brag enough about New Holland's opportunity back through NCBA. and really hope that they continue to do that. Reporting from Searcy, Arkansas, I'm Brian Baxter for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. New Holland does indeed offer outstanding discounts to NCBA members. To learn more about those discounts, visit ncba.org or your local New Holland dealer. You can also head to the website newholland.com. Still ahead on Cattlemen and Cattlemen, we'll examine how producers in Hawaii keep their cattle healthy and profitable. Stay with us, we'll be right back. There is a new world out there, revealing itself in unpredictable ways. A world that demands more from the land and those who grow, farm, and build on it. This new world calls for the ingenuity to get more out of it, while preserving as much as we can. 
After all, to stay ahead of tomorrow, we need to be equipped for it today. For cattlemen and women, job one is making sure their animals have the feed, water, and care they need every single day. That's true whether you raise cattle in Colorado as I do or in a place like Hawaii, which presents an entirely different set of challenges. Joining us once again are Dr. Lisa Wood and Dale Sandlin. They're with the Hawaii Cattlemen's Council. And you know, we've been visiting about this five-part video series that you all created to teach people about the Hawaii cattle industry. And I guess I would begin with you, Dr. Wood. Do you think consumers in Hawaii are interested in learning more about how cattle are raised in Hawaii? I think everywhere you look nowadays, there's increasing demand for locally sourced food, and Hawaii is no different. People want to feel a connection to the people that are growing their food. They want to know where it came from. It's important for us to let our consumers know that they can be proud of the work our cattlemen and women are doing and that our production practices mirror the values that our community shares in terms of animal care and land stewardship. That's great. And Dale, were there some specific messages you were trying to get across in this video series relative to what your producers are doing in the, in the way of cattle care? Many times our ranchers are so busy producing the product that we eat every day that they have a hard time getting off the ranch in order to tell their story. And so we wanted to give everyone an unscripted look at how cattle were produced, what our production practices were, and giving them the opportunity to tell their story in their own words in order that they are able to, uh, to show the good work that they're doing. Well, thank you both. And now let's head once again back to Hawaii cattle country for a look at the video the Hawaii Cattlemen's Council created that focused specifically on animal care. It's early morning on the Big Island, and the cowboy crew is gathering cows. It's a scene you could see almost any day on ranches across all the islands of Hawaii. And unlike the image many people have in their minds of cowboys and a cattle drive, this is a peaceful process. Most people, when they see cowboys working cattle, they see it on TV, and there's a lot of, you know, hollering and a lot of motion going on. And, and really, um, for the most part, a good stockman uh, tries to minimize that. Um, I always tell the guys the only time we really want to make noise is we want to get somebody's attention but not the cows. Uh, we try to work them as quietly as we can. We try to make sure that the cattle are moving in a very calm manner. Cattlemen and women on ranches in Hawaii have always made cattle care a priority. But over the past decade, many have worked hard to learn innovative cattle handling methods and adopted what are called low stress ways of moving and working with their cattle. Because through the years we've gone to these different seminars and really bought into the new practices and so when we have a new employee or a summer hire then we'll go through our corral and we're not through the corral but kind of work with them individually when they first arrive here and make sure that they're on board with how we want to handle our animals. Low stress that's that's something that everybody all the employees on the ranch the cowboys all really take really serious. Stockmanship's been probably one of the biggest things I take with me every day we move cattle or we flow cattle through a pen, you know. I think all producers, you know, uh, do as good a job, if not better, than anywhere else in, in, the, in the U.S. as far as animal welfare and handling of, of cattle. And just uh, constant uh, presentations being made by the University of Hawaii, or Hawaii Cattlemen's Council, they, uh, they do a good job. And we start at an early age. We, um, Beef quality assurance is a requirement for all 4 hers every year that they produce uh, livestock they have to go through the trains. Whether it's taught to kids in 4-H or seasoned ranch hands, low stress handling is one cornerstone of what's called the Beef Quality Assurance or BQA program. BQA is a comprehensive research-based industry education program that teaches ranchers and their crew best management practices. Beef Quality Assurance program is a uh nationally coordinated and state implemented program. I, I think it's the best way to put it is it kind of provides a guideline of how to produce a safer, wholesome product. To 
Through the BQA program, Hawaii cattle producers receive continuing education and they become certified demonstrating that they are doing the best job in cattle care and producing safe, high quality beef that includes strict guidelines for the safe use of antibiotics or other medicines cattle might need. Yeah, as far as antibiotics, hormones um, in, in beef that's produced in Hawaii, I mean, for, first off, um, I mean, you kind of got to look at the weather behind me and we don't have the stresses that you have in the mainland. And a lot of our producers rarely, if ever, are using antibiotics. As far as antibiotics and hormones go, it's something that is very valuable if an animal gets sick. Uh, it's, I think it's the humane thing to be able to provide them with the medicines that they need to help them to get better. But in our natural program, we don't use antibiotics on the animals that we sell to market. So if an animal does get sick to the point that they need antibiotics, then we would pull them from our program and treat them. Whether you're buying beef in a grocery store on Oahu or a burger at a restaurant on Hawaii, it's natural to wonder where the beef you're buying came from and how the cattle were raised. For Hawaii ranchers, producing the highest quality beef and giving their cattle the best care possible is a commitment they live out every day. We've always been very sensitive to the fact that you've got to take care of your livestock. I mean, they're part of our, that's how we make a living. And so we're very, our standards are set very high. Um, the way I was raised with my mother and dad, that uh, we take care of the animals, they come first. Our operation is, you know, the backbone of it is animal welfare. We all do what we do because we love animals. Um, every day we take care of our animals. We take a look at them, we make sure that we're always improving our facilities, if there's anything that hurts them or is sharp or scares them. Um, every day, it's important. I feel very privileged and honored to, to be in my local purchasing position for Whole Foods because it's allowed me to travel to such amazing ranches and uh, visiting the, these amazing spaces in the, uh, on the Big Island and seeing these cows that are able to range free over hundreds of acres and uh, eat just amazing grass and the sunshine with, the, with cool breezes from the ocean is just um, in, in, incredible. I've never seen more happy animals in my life. So as a cattle rancher, uh, cattle is an uh, intimate part of my life personally and to uh, every rancher in Hawaii. It provides us the lifestyle that we would not trade for anything. And uh, at the end of the day, we are providing a product to Hawaii that, that we feel is some of the best beef in the world. Still ahead, it's time for a visit with our good friend, Baxter Black. So stay with us, we'll be right back. No matter what job I've got to do, my John Deere 5 e tractor can do it all. Whether I'm cutting, moving feed, or building a fence. Using my 5E means my work gets done faster at a price I can afford, and that works for me. When a new calf hits the ground, his clock starts ticking. A belly full of colostrum gives him his best odds but if he doesn't get any, his time starts running out. That's when you grab a bag of Oxford Ag Colostrum in their patented feeding system. Fill them with warm water, shake it to mix, feed it with a tube or nipple, and you are done. No bucket, no bottle, no mess, and right on time. Get yours at OxfordAg.com. Cost less than a dead calf. Did you know that Prefert makes over a thousand different farm, ranch, and rodeo items? And now, thanks to Prefert Direct, it's easier than ever before to get access to every item Prefert makes delivered direct to your local dealer. For more information about Prefert Direct, visit us at Prefert.com. Prefert, America's number one name in farm, ranch, and rodeo. Whereas the average cowboy is a person of good intentions, generous to a fault, and kind to women, children, and animals, and whereas you may frequently find said cowboy entangled at the center of many a controversial, embarrassing, or blatantly stupid miscarriage of sanity, this form is offered as a document 
in which said cowboy acknowledges his participation in some grievous social, marital, work-related, tequila-afflicted misbehavior. The offenders may circle below. I freely admit that I lost control of A, my mouth, B, my good dog, and C, the balloons full of beer I was juggling. Two, I now realize that A, it was not as funny as I thought, B, you didn't have fire and flood insurance, and C, uh, weed eaters are not the proper way to slice cheesecake. And I know that now. Uh, three, it is true that A, I didn't know your uncle had a pacemaker when I hit him with a hot shot. <laughs> B, you should avoid microwaving paint gun balls. And C, skeet shooting should be done outdoors. Uh, four, what I want the offendee, offendees to know in my defense is that A, I am fully aware of the damage I have done to our relationship, the landscaping and the parrot cage, and I humbly, humbly apologize. B, I messed up. I'm sorry I did. I didn't mean to wreck your party, our date, your grandmother's bowflex. Sometimes I just get carried away. And if you give me one more chance, I promise I'll try to do better. And C, I am unable to remember what happened, but if the DNA matches, I take complete responsibility. Uh, print your name here at the bottom. This is Baxter Black from out here, in here, there. Thanks, Baxter. That letter could sure come in handy for some of us. Want to rewatch an episode of Cattleman to Cattleman or catch up on anything you've missed? Then visit our YouTube page. You'll find replays of all of our shows filled with educational segments and producer profiles from all around the country. So check us out on YouTube. We'll have more after this. Stay with us. Join the National Cattlemen's Beef Association. NCBA is the oldest cattle industry organization, working every day to defend your interests in Washington, D.C. And there are big benefits to being a member. You'll get news you can use in the National Cattlemen and policy updates from Beltway Beef, plus big discounts from John Deere, Cabela's, and more great partners. Join now. Call 866-233-3872 or sign up online at ncba.org. What does it mean to be an American cattleman? It means you have what it takes where it counts, on the inside. At Ritchie, we understand that. It's what's on the inside that defines us. We share the same values, ingenuity, commitment, sense of pride. These are the values that built this country. They're the values that built this company, Ritchie. Proud to be a partner to the American cattleman since 1921. One of the most important things cattlemen and women can do is join the fight to protect our industry by becoming a member of the National Cattlemen's Beef Association. And here to tell us more about the value and some of the benefits of membership is John Robinson. He's NCBA's Vice President of Membership and Communications. Thanks for coming back to the show, John. Thanks for having me. So, so let's start with just a broad question about uh, what is the value of an organization like NCBA to its members? Sure. You know, Kevin, one of the things we say is that we're here to fight for the grassroots cattle producer. We've got a little over 25,000 members, and we are really their voice in Washington, D.C. So on issues from uh, the farm bill to fake meat, uh, we're there engaged every single day in Washington, D.C. We've got a staff of lobbyists there. They're really working for farmers and ranchers out there in the country. You know, I've had folks tell me, hey, I'm a member of my local and state cattlemen's organization, really don't have much time to get involved at the national level, don't go to NCBA convention. Why is it important for those folks to be an NCBA member as well? Sure. Well, you know, when our staff of lobbyists goes to Washington, D.C., it's really important that those members of Congress uh, understand that they represent farmers and ranchers out there. So the more farmers and ranchers we represent, the more powerful our voice is in Washington, D.C. 
you know, really uh, the, the policy for NCBA, the, the decisions that we take to Capitol Hill and our marching orders there, uh, those come from the county and, and state levels. So uh, the, the ideas that you discuss at your county meeting, th those become state policy, and when they become state policy, they move on to the national level, and, and that's what gets implemented in Washington, D.C. on behalf of our members. Yeah. So in addition to uh, just having a voice in Washington, D.C., I shouldn't say just, but in addition to having a voice mm -hmm. in Washington, D.C., what are some of the other tangible benefits members receive? Sure. So uh, every month uh, our members receive the National Cattlemen's, our newspaper. It talks about all the work we're doing uh, across the country, not just in Washington, D.C. Uh, twice a year they get Directions Magazine, mm -hmm. which is filled full of management information, yep. uh, ideas to help them improve their herd. Uh, there's discounts on annual convention this year in New Orleans, which mm -hmm. will be a good time. Uh, and then there's a, there's a host of discounts, uh, everything from uh, John Deere's new Green Fleet program that's rolling out this month. Uh, NCBA members are going to be inducted at a Platinum II level. Wow. Uh, so same as buying three to five machines from your John Deere dealer. NCBA members walk in the door, they automatically have that recognition. Uh, a lot of discounts for uh, things like Ram trucks. Um, uh, Cabela's discounts, and then of course uh, the, the one that everybody gets when they become a member, they get uh, uh, the opportunity to uh, get a Zoetis product, a dewormer that they can then use on their herd, and that right there almost pays for their membership. So a lot of membership benefits. We always say that. It really, you, you can almost make money by becoming an NCBA member and get all the other benefits as well. So thanks so much for coming to the show, and you thanks bet. for all you do for our organization. Thanks, Kevin. Now, John mentioned some great reasons to become an NCBA member, but another one is the chance to read the National Cattleman. It's the official publication of NCBA and provides timely news and articles about the issues and events affecting the beef industry. A subscription is included free of charge when you become a member of NCBA. Just call 1-866-233-3872 or visit the website ncba.org. As a viewer of NCBA's Cattleman to Cattleman, we want to hear from you. If you have questions or comments or even a story idea for us, drop us an email and we may use them on a future show. Send us your thoughts at our email address, c2c at beef.org. Well, that wraps up this edition of NCBA's Cattleman to Cattleman. Thanks so much for spending time with us. We'll see you again next week right here on RFD TV.